Father, we declare we want you to bring the heavens open. Pour out your power. Pour out your glory. Pour out your fire. We need you this hour. Yeah. Yeah. Say, oh. That you would ring. That you would ring the heavens. That you would ring.
Jeremy Gibson is a dynamic and highly regarded speaker who is known for delivering potent messages that resonate with his audience. He has a unique ability to weave personal experiences, biblical wisdom, and divine revelations together, leaving a lasting impact on his listeners. His focus is to bring the scriptures to life, making them relevant and practical to the everyday lives of his audience. He is committed to helping believers grow in their faith by encountering the Holy Spirit and uniting in kingdom purpose. Jeremy understands the transformative power of experiencing God and is dedicated to leading the church back to the altar and restoring the fear of the Lord. His messages are known for their straightforward style and high impact delivery, providing powerful insights from God's word. His mandate is to call our generation to the hill of the Lord, preaching with purity, power, and impact. Jeremy's greatest joy is his family. He lovingly leads his wife, Gabrielle, of 17 years, and their children, Micah, Heaven, Kaylin, Eden, Abigail, Olivia, and their late beloved, Ava Rose. This deep-rooted love and commitment to his family is his bedrock. Jeremy is the founder of God's Firebrands, a movement dedicated to challenging men's traditions and gathering a remnant to confront modern idolatry and compromise in the church while providing Christocentric discipleship. His burning passion has led him to gather called out ones, preach the gospel, and pioneer the return of the fear of the Lord. The Father's House of Baltimore, please welcome Apostle Jeremy Gibson. I feel home. I feel home. I feel like I'm home. I feel like I belong here. I feel like I belong here. Amen. Amen. We honor our leaders, Apostle Yolanda and Pastor Corey Stiff. We love you and the entire Stiff family. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when God calls a person, that family is called too. We did not honor one. But I'm honoring all. Amen, somebody. So we honor the entire family. I'm your little big brother, big brother. From Atlanta. Originally from Tampa. But we built some things down there and God called us to Georgia to do a work in Atlanta. We are excited about. I honor my wife. I love you. I love you. Now, we ain't going to shout right there because I can. Ay, 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 ay. 
Because <laughs> when a man's ways, y'all about to talk to me. Uh-huh. When a man desires favor, he gets married. Y'all ain't talking to me. Ha ha ha. Ah, when well you want God's favor, find a wife. I didn't say a woman. That's a problem. A lot of people looking for a woman. We want a wife. Oh, let me let you know what? Because I can I <laughs> Because I, I, I read somewhere or I saw somewhere that a wise woman builds. Throw this mic at you. I heard a wise woman builds. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. I don't have much time, but I have a lot to say. <laughs> We're going to work in here. Y'all ready to work? Let's do some work. Amen. Open up your Bibles. Woohoo. I feel all here. It's in these moments that I have to have to govern myself because I'm liable to take off and, 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 and prophesy, cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, shift things, and I'm trying to be mindful that I'm on assignment. The woman of God texts me and said, do this, and I said, yes, ma'am. I wasn't even expecting this. I thought she wanted to talk to me over the phone. But she sent a plane ticket. I said, oh, God. Oh, God. I was, I was, I was not ready for this. But I thank God for it. We honor, we honor them. I love them. We've been knowing them since 2016. First time we met Apostle Yolanda. And we knew then what this ought to be. But because of loyalty to dead things. Okay. Can I be myself? I hope I can because I'm going to do it anyway. Isaiah chapter 54. We're going to look at verse 1 through 5. Isaiah 54 verse 1 through 5. Now if going to look at my computer while I minister because I wrote some things I want to say specifically. It's not that I can't preach without them. Please believe me, I can. <laughs> but I want to focus on what I have to say. Amen. Okay, so if I don't give you a lot of eye contact, it's not personal. I'm just focused. Is that all right? Isaiah 54 verse 1 through 5. And the Bible says, shout for joy, O barren womb, who bears no children. Break forth in song and cry aloud, you who have never travailed, because more, y'all, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, saith the Lord. Enlarge the sight of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not hold back. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is not the season to hold back. It's time to push, baby. Oh, yes. Lift your ropes and drive your stakes in deep. For you will spread out to the right and left. Your descendants will dispossess the nations <laughs> and inhabit desolate cities. Here we go. Here's the charge. Do not be afraid, for you will not be put to shame. You should shout right there. Oh, 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 you should shout right now because you're not going to be put to shame over this. What God called you to do, what God called you to build, what God told you to buy, you will not be put to shame for this. The two million shall come in. You will not be put to shame for this. I'm talking in here. Do not be intimidated for you will not be humiliated. Oh. Here we go, here we go. For you will forget the shame of your youth. I made some choices. Yeah, yeah, I did. I made some choices. And will remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your husband is your maker. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel 
is your redeemer. He has called the God of all the earth. Father, we thank you for this word today. May it bless and expand your people in Jesus' name. Come on, you're going to have your seats. <laughs> For those who like to take copious notes, the title of my message today, if I had one, is called Push It Out. Somebody say, Push It Out. Oh, yes. I'm about to teach preach and then prophesy in that order we're going to teach preach and prophesy the word kingdom occurs about 160 times in the new testament and in its simplest form it means royal reign or a king's domain in reference to god it refers to the realm of god and also the reign of god in reference to god the word kingdom refers to the realm of god and also the reign of God. When speaking of the realm of God, Psalms 45, 6 says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Psalms 103, 19 says, The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Hallelujah. Psalms 145, 10 through 13 says, All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. When the phrase kingdom of God is used in this general sense, it refers to everything that is in the universe, whether seen or unseen. There is a general sense in which everything is entirely under God's authority. In this sense, beloved, the kingdom is unlimited, come on, and everlasting, and no one can escape its reach. In this sense, God can reach into a club and snatch a dancer off a pole. Come on here. He can snatch an addict. I, 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 he can snatch an addict out of their addiction. Come on now. The power of God can reach to the highest valley. Hallelujah. The highest mountain and to the lowest valley. Hallelujah. The power of God can snatch a preacher out of perversion and a prophet out of idolatry. In this sense, come on now, the blood of Jesus can touch you wherever you are. No one can escape the agenda of the kingdom of God. He is omnipresent. In other words, he's everywhere and nowhere all at the same time. You cannot escape his gaze. The book of Revelation tells us he has fire in his eyes. This is the eyes of introspection. Come on here. The eyes of judgment. Come on. The eyes of inspection. And David said it like this in Psalms 139, 7 through 10. If I ascended to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the outermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. He is also omniscient which means he knows the end from the beginning. <laughs> he knows what steps I took before I take them. I said took. He knows what steps I took before I take them. Oh, yes, he does. Isaiah 46, verse 9 and 10 says, Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Lastly he's omnipresent. I mean om omnipotent. Somebody say omnipotent. That means he has all power in his hands. Jeremiah 32 17 says our Lord God it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Now, I, 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 I want to know, is this a shouting house? Because it was at that moment you should have just clapped your hands or threw your head back. Because Jeremiah said there is nothing too hard for my God. I, I, I don't know about Baal. I think there's a lot of things hard for him. I think he could not even make it rain when his false prophets begin to cut themselves. But ah, there was a prophet in Jerusalem. I'm talking. There was a prophet who stood up. Oh yes. And he dug a trench around an altar. And he began to pray and the fire fell. I want to know, is there anything too hard for my God? There may be some things hard for those who worship Muhammad. But there's nothing too hard for those who worship Jesus. 
Oh yes, there may be some hard things for those who worship Buddha, but I know oh, there is nothing too hard for El Shaddai. <laughs> El, El Yon, there's nothing too hard for him. Oh yes, he can call a dead man out of a tomb. Oh yes, unwrap him. Oh yes, take him out and unwrap him. <laughs> the realm of God. Nothing can escape his reach. Nothing is too hard for him. When we're talking about the realm of God, now number two, the reign of God. Somebody say the reign of God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 10 says, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew eleven twelve 12 says, and from the time John the Baptist began preaching until now. The kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and violent people lay hold of it. When the phrase kingdom of God is used in this specific sense, it refers only to those spiritual beings who are submitted to and cooperating with God's eternal will and purpose. In this sense, the kingdom is limited and can be extended in its reach. In this sense, we can pray for God's rulership and kingdom to come. When we do, what we're doing is we're praying that those not presently cooperating with God's will, come on here, and purpose will do so. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're praying that those who are not presently cooperating with God's will will do so, thus extending the reach or the borders of the kingdom. In this sense, we call apostles out of legalism, back to governing the, uh, by a kingdom blueprint. Come on. We are calling prophets out of the caves uh, to throw down Jezebelic systems and guard the body from idolatry. We are calling evangelists to gather by grace uh, instead of guilt people into salvation. We're calling pastors uh, out of the daycare Christian cuddle club uh, back into leading the local church uh, into a place of emotional, financial, and, men and mental stability. Come on here. And maturity. We're calling teachers uh, back into a place of providing biblical foundations uh, that ground the saints. Uh, and above all else, uh, we're calling everyone uh, back into sonship uh, that they might know the Father, that they might yield to his eternal purpose uh, by conforming to the image of Christ uh, and turn their known world upside down apostles must govern prophets must guard evangelists must gather and teachers must ground and the kingdom must be advanced yeah. hallelujah. 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 hallelujah hallelujah Matthew eleven twelve 12 says it like this and from the time let's preach here and from the time John the Baptist began preaching unto now the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and violent men lay hold of it. When we read that the kingdom of heaven is forcefully advancing, Matthew is saying that God's kingdom or dominion is coming to earth. If that's true, then this passage does not speak about a rebellion in heaven as we read in Revelations. This passage is speaking about an invasion on earth. Mm. The Greek word for forcefully advancing is bazete, bazete, and it can mean two things. Number one, to come with violence, to force, or to crowd into. Oh, I like that. To come with violence, to force, to crowd into. The second thing it means is to suffer violence and to be treated forcefully. To suffer violence and to be treated forcefully. How we interpret forcefully advancing will influence our understanding of the last part of that scripture. Forceful men lay hold of the kingdom. So how we inter interpret forcefully advancing will, will, will persuade us or have a type of influence over the last portion, men lay hold of it. There are two options for what type of forceful men they are. Number one, they could be people who opposed the kingdom of heaven, such as King Herod, who had just imprisoned John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 11, verse 2, and also Matthew 14 and 3. With this understanding, Jesus is saying to us that God's kingdom is coming in power and forcing its way into the world, but there are men who will oppose it and fight against it. Number two, second interpretation could be 
that they could be people who are determined to force or invade their way into the kingdom of heaven because they want to take hold of it for themselves. So we have two different interpretations. One, it could be that uh, there are people who want to stop the kingdom from advancing. And number two, there are people that are pushing their way into it. They want the narrow way. <laughs> they, 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 they want the narrow way. In context, beloved, both are accurate interpretations. The first interpretation implies that there will be people who are demonically influenced on assignment to stop us from advancing the kingdom. Don't be surprised. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if your, if your cousin who knew God delivered you from marijuana want to one day come and blow it in your face. Don't be surprised. Don't, 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 don't be surprised if that, if that ex God delivered you from all of a sudden hit you with a hey big head text two o'clock in the morning. Don't, 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 don't be surprised. Why, 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 why are you surprised? No, don't, 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 don't be surprised. Huh? Huh? See, 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 none of this stuff should surprise you because when you advance in the kingdom, you expect opposition. Come on, baby. A, a war is two sides opposing one another. I expect it, but I also expect to conquer it. See, that's the, see, that's the thing right there. I expect to conquer. Watch this. The second interpretation implies that deciding to enter the kingdom of heaven requires vigorous and forceful action. Let's do some work. I want to focus on this one right here. Vigorous and forceful action. Somebody say vigorous and forceful action. When we read Jesus' similar statement recorded in Luke's gospel, it appears that this is what he had in mind. Luke chapter 16, verse 16. And the Bible says in Luke 16, 16, in the NIV version, the law and the prophets were proclaimed unto John. Since that time, the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached and everyone is forcing his way into it. In other words, Jesus is saying uh, that to enter the kingdom and advance it, one must take deliberate, purposeful, uh, and determined action. One must take deliberate, hallelujah, purposeful, and determined action. In other words, you must be determined to invade your culture with the message of the kingdom and take the spoils. Come on now. This is not church. This depiction is not what modern society calls the church. This description depicts an army invading a country, conquering it, and colonizing that country until every trace of that country's original identity has been replaced by the con conquering country's dialect, mannerisms, education values, moral codes, rule of law, governance, and rate of exchange. Baby, when the kingdom comes, it's supposed to colonize. That means that we advance it to every trace of your daddy's DNA is no longer there. That means we preach it until that mannerism that your mama gave you is no longer there. That means we teach it until everything your school system taught you is no longer there. Hallelujah. That means we advance it until you look like him, smell like him, walk like him, talk like him, cast out devils like him, hallelujah, decree like him, my God, walk on water like him, we are advancing a kingdom, we're not here having charge, we are advancing a mission of a king and his kingdom give God glory in this place this is what we are here for. This is what you have been called to do. This is what your training has been about. This is why you had to go into that cave last season. This is why God snatched you out of Saul's house and brought you to the father's house. Oh, yes. This is why you've been grieved with modern Christianity. This is why you are frustrated by the mundane. This is why they don't like you on social media. This is why they can't stand you at your job. This is why nobody in your family want nothing to do with you. This is why you had to leave that city and move to another place. Baby, we're advancing something bigger than me. Oh, you were called to conquer. You were called to rule. You were called to colonize. You were called to expand. You didn't, you didn't start that business because you just like doing hell. Maybe this is bigger than box braids. This is, this is bigger than box braids. 
sew-ins and quick weaves. This is bigger than this. Huh? Huh? You didn't, you, uh, you didn't go to school to get that degree so just so you can have money alone? Baby, you got that degree because God needed something in the earth that only you can push out. Oh, yes, we work in here. That only you can birth. That only you can do. Don't be concerned about the debt. I heard he was a debt payer. I heard he wanted us to prosper and be in good health even as our soul they got that soul again that means the broken part of you must be healed in this season because he wants to prosper your money but your soul is in the way prosper and be in good health even as your soul that traumatized, broken part, molested part of you that you don't want to deal with because you don't want nobody in your business is stopping you from advancing. Baby, I don't know about you, but I believe in Jesus and therapy. I want Christ and a couch. Talk to me. Oh, yes. While God is working on my spirit, I'm working on my soul. Oh, yes. We are co-laborers in Christ. We are working together to get out of me everything my, my generations put in me that I did not ask for. I ain't asked for this, but I got to deal with it. Oh, yes. Hurting me wasn't my fault. But healing me is my responsibility. God needs to heal you. He needs the whole version of you. Oh, yes. The version of you that won't just dance and go. Oh, God. Uh, the part of you that don't shout and go lie. Oh, oh yes. Listen, my God, I'm trying. Hold on now. Hold on now. <laughs> Hold on now. Because I'm a guest. Hold on now. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> I, I do want to come back. I love y'all. I gotta work this right now, cause, cause we see well. Here's the th oh, here's the thing. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I got 36 minutes to try to do all of this. Listen, uh, here's the thing. People act as if you can't see them, and the moment you think that God can't see you is the moment people start doing things adverse to what they've been taught. But God has a way of revealing. The Bible says a little bird will tell a matter. Watch this now. What God desires is to snatch you out of where you are and put you right smack dab in the middle of his eternal purpose. Meaning that he's been working this thing this whole time. That means that whatever age you are, he's been working on you for that many years. You thought you just met Christ five years ago. You thought you just got saved 10 years ago. Don't you know it was in God's eternal purpose to redeem you before time and memorial? Don't you know he was a lamb slain before the foundations of the world? That means he had already purpose in his mind to call you out of darkness into this marvelous life. He's been working on you for 45 years. Baby, it's time for a new yes. Let me work here. You were not meant to live in a box. Stick your head in the sand and let life happen to you. You are a warrior. You are an overcomer. This is why you had to go through that strenuous process. This is why I felt like you were being stretched beyond your current capacity. Baby, you can't stay here. We got somewhere to go. Oh, yes, you're being stretched because God says it's time to expand now. This is why you keep getting them new assignments. This is why Apostle keeps dealing with you in your life. Baby, it's time to expand now. You cannot stay the way you are. You must come out of what you've been in. Beloved, we are living in an hour when it seems that everything that can be shaken is being shaken. Everything that can come against the body of Christ has attempted to on a small but global scale. 
We are seeing across this, this nation and the nations of the earth increased injustices, racial tension, stigmas, political perversion, and e ecclesiastical mismanagement, as well as spiritual fanaticism. The overwhelming pressure placed on creation to produce what it was commanded by God has become too much for it because there is a lack of godly representation in key areas of interest on the earth. In other words, the sons of God need to manifest. The New Living Translation of Romans 8.19 says, For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. The NLT version of Romans 8.19 says, For all creation is waiting eagerly, hallelujah, for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Not what you're labeled as, not what you pretend to be, but who you really are. I said who you really are. Not what you went to school to become. Not what you were ordained as. Not what profession you went into. But who you really are. Do you know who you really are? I said who you're not what you serve as. But who you really are. You know you are a son of God. Oh yes. Hallelujah. You are a son. Baby you need to come out of yourself. This is the hour to come out of you. You've been holding you captive to an identity that God says is outdated and to quit it. I want you to be a son. Oh yes. You're not an apostle. You're not a prophet. You're a son of God. Oh let me digress here. I was in prayer one day. And in prayer the Holy Spirit said Jeremy what are you? I said I'm an apostle. He said no you're not. He said what are you? I said I'm a prophet. He said no you're not. He asked me one more time what are you? I said Lord you know. What you going to do at this point? He said, I said, Lord, you know. He said, you are a son. And he said, as a son, you can be whatever I need you to be to whoever I need you to be. Oh. See, stop identifying yourself by something that you're bigger than. Come on, let's stretch in here. Stop identifying yourself with something that you're not really. You have a function, but your identity is not that function. I function as an apostle. I function as a prophet. But baby, I'm a son. And as a son, I can be whatever he wants me to be. He is that I am that I am. Come on. The great I am lives on the inside of me. And whatever he wants, I can be. Because he is whatever we need. And if Christ in me, that hope of glory is living on inside of me, then that glory will manifest as healing. That glory will manifest as deliverance. That glory will manifest as breakthrough. That glory will manifest as prophecy. That glory will manifest in any way he wants it because we'll yield it and submit it. Throw your head back and say, yes, God. Oh, I'm yielded in this hour. Yes, God. I'm submitted in this hour. Yes, God. I'm not holding back nothing in this hour. I'm not restraining anything. I'm not on reservation. Oh yes! It's time to lift in your coat. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Abram! Get out of what's familiar. Come out of your father's house, Abram. To connect it to what you know. You're too familiar with the place. They birthed you into paganism and idolatry. But come out of there, Abram. Why? Because you keep identifying yourself by what they call you. Oh, yes. And I can't birth a nation through you until I change you. <laughs> I can't birth nothing in you until I change your name and your nature. I can't do nothing in you till I change everything about you. See, you keep, hallelujah. If you stay where you're misidentified, you'll miss purpose, you'll miss my God. Seasons, divine appointments, and alignments. What, what do I mean by this? I'm not talking about your location. I'm talking about your mindset. Because if you stay in that mentality, you might miss what God is doing in this house. Oh, yes. Come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. When God has purpose on your life, he will call you out of the familiar. 
hallelujah, and cause you to crush your idols and become renamed. There is a rename in take, taking place in this hour. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I do that when I feel the oil. I'm, I'm okay. I'm really not crazy. <laughs> Come out. I got something for you to do. Come out of that stinking thinking. Come out of religion. Come out of poverty. Come out of not having enough. Come out of accepting that doctor's report. Come out of accepting that you got to pay rent. No, baby, I'm paying a mortgage and I'm not going to pay that too long. Oh, yes, come out. Oh, yes, come out from driving that type of car. Come out from not fulfilling your assignment. Come out with barely meeting God's potential in you. Come out. There is something greater in you that needs to come forth, but you cannot do it thinking the way you've been thinking. Thinking. We got to expand now. Oh yes, it's time to crush your idols. There is a naming taking place in the spirit. Prophesy, Jeremy. I think I will. There is a naming taking place. There is a naming happening in the spirit. Oh yes, Hallelujah. You were called barren. You were called the one who couldn't bear children. They spoke ill over your womb. Your capacity to produce came under question. Oh yes, but you're about to give birth now. Come on. Oh yes, you're about to. To give birth. Oh, I wish I had a people who understood what's happening right now. Maybe it's about to give birth. Oh, 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 oh yes. <laughs> Something's kicking in the realm of the spirit. Something's kicking in my womb. The Bible says, Saint. Oh, barren womb. Oh, I'm talking. Break forth in song. Cry aloud. Because what you're about to push out will shake the earth. What you're about to push out will shake the nations. What you're about to push out is bigger than you. Come on, come on, come on, lift your voice in here. Come on, come on, come on, lift your voice. It's time to work. Come on, come on. Come on, push up, come on. Oh, satada ba ba ba. Oh, satada ba da ba so. Come on, push. Kada ba 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 se di di satada ba so. Come on, break forth in song. Cry aloud. Because what you're about to push out it's about to set your family free. What you're about to push out, it's about to put you on a whole new trajectory. What you're about to push out, what cause curses to break. What you're about to push out, it's going to expand this reach of this house. What you're about to push out, come on, in a great house, there is vessels of honor. Come on, vessels of honor. Come on, honorable vessels. Come on, honorable vessels. Come on now, this is your hour. Baby, you're carrying the destiny of nations in your womb and they're waiting for you to arrive. Come on, push now. Come on, push now. Come on, push now. Oh! So, come on, bear down. Bear down and push. Bear down and push. You've been holding this for nine months. You've been holding this for 17 years. Bear down and push. Oh, ta 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 ha ha. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Your baby about to crown now. Come on. Come on. Shut up there. Ta 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 pa pa pa. Root so ta di 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 ya ta pa pa pa. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 30 more seconds. Come on. Push here. I feel the water breaking in the realm of the spirit. I feel a shaking. I feel this room growing. I feel the masses coming. I feel, hallelujah, increase in this room. Oh, oh, don't get tired. Come on. Oh, that's it. Oh, don't quit. Just push, don't quit. Just push, don't quit. Just push, don't get tired, don't quit. Just push, don't get tired, don't quit. Come on, just push, don't get, don't quit. Hey, just push, just push, just push, hey, just push.
push, come on. Just push. Just push. Just push. That's it. Just push. Come on. Just push. Yeah. Just push. Yeah. Just push. Don't get tired. Just push. Don't get weary. Just push. Don't give up. Just push. 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 Hey, hey. Just push. Don't get weary. Just push. the spirit come on come on come on you waiting on me no baby don't wait on me come on come on I can't help you do this watch listen when a woman is giving birth and I know this because I helped my wife deliver two of our children at home no midwives no doulas, just her and I. With a birthing pool, just her and I. And I love, I love my wife. She wrote me a whole handbook on what to do. A whole book, a whole handbook. And you know, I was reading this. And the more I read, the wider my eyes got. Because of the detail of how she strategically wrote out each moment. And she told me, she said, there is going to come a point to where I get tired. At this point, know that the baby is crowded. And I'm going to go through what is called the ring of fire. And she told me, when I get to this point, I'm going to want to quit. When I get to this point, I'm going to want to give up. You might hear me complain. You might hear me cry out, I can't do this. I might even wail. I might get a little violent. But don't pay attention to my actions. My baby crowning. Oh, I'm talking. I'm just in transition. <laughs> Don't pay attention to how I respond. Just know that I'm in transition. It's at this point I'm about to give birth, but I don't think I can. What I need from you, I need you to be in my ear telling me you got this. You were born for this. You were made for this. Oh yes, your body was uh, created for this moment. You were designed to push this out. Oh yes, everything within you wants to push it out. Don't let your mind stop your push. Oh, Father's house. I just came by to tell you that if you're in a position where you want to quit, baby, your baby is on the way. Just when your thought it was on, it just means it's time to push. Just when you thought time was up, it just means it's time to push. Just when you thought just you push. couldn't get it out. It just means it's time to push. It's time to push. Oh, just push. Just push. Just push. Just push. Just push. We're expanding just now. Push. We're growing just now. Push. We're fixing just now. Push. Releasing just now. Push. Expanding just now. Push. We're growing just now. Push. We're growing just now. Push. Releasing just now. Push. We're expanding just now. Push. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't let your mind tell you what your body can do. Don't let your mind tell you what your body can do. Don't let your mind tell you what your body can do. Push, push. Don't let your mind tell you what your body can do. Don't let your mind tell you what your body can do. Don't let your mind tell you what your body can do. Push. Hey, don't let your mind tell your body. Don't let your mind tell you what your body can do. Don't let your mind tell you what your body can do. Don't let your mind tell you what your body can do. Don't let your mind tell you what your body can do. Don't let your mind tell you what your body can do. Don't let your mind tell you what your body
what your mind tell you what your body can do just push just push come on don't, don't let, let your mind, mind tell you what your body can do don't let your mind tell you what your body can do don't let your mind tell you what your body can do just push just push. one more time don't, don't let your mind tell you what your body can do don't let your mind tell you what your body can do don't let your mind tell you what your body can do just push we are the body of Christ. Oh, I'm talking. We are the body of Christ. Oh, yes. And when we work together, we can push out something that'll shake America. Oh! What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? That means don't let your flesh cause you to react in a way that's suspect to the assignment of this house. When we work together as a body, we can't let our flesh tell our body what we can't do. Oh, I'm working in here. Don't let your flesh tell this body what it cannot do. We can buy the billion, two million, that's nothing. Oh yes, we can. Oh, y'all ain't shouting right there. I said it's nothing. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. The Lord spoke to my wife and I. And the Lord said, it's time to arise and build. And I said, Lord, how can I, how will I do this? And God said, go read Nehemiah. So I'm placing on your life a Nehemiah mandate. I said, okay. So I went and read the book of Nehemiah. And I saw where Nehemiah had favor with the king. And he was in deep intercession before he went to this king. I went back to the Lord. I said, Lord, what are you trying to show me? He said, I'm about to give you favor with kings in the earth who's going to have everything you need to accomplish the assignment I sent you to do. Then I began to read where the Bible says the king sent Nehemiah letters. Gave Nehemiah letters. Those letters went out to the keepers of the forest. Those who held the timber. Those who held all the resources that Nehemiah needs. Somebody say letters. Oh, yes. These letters are assignments. Uh, so when God gives you an assignment, he's giving you like a letter to go out to catch hold of the keepers of the forest. That means these are men who have the buildings. They have the money. They have the drywall. They have the paint. They have the screens. They have the products. They have the vans. Oh, I'm talking. They have the. Re they have everything we need. My God. And this is going to be debt free. I'm prophesying now. The Lord told me this. You know. You know. We nosy, right? We prophetic. We know. Whatever. We pro we like to be nosy in the spirit. Oh yes. We pro I want to know. Don't I? Don't want. I want to know. Eyes wide open. I want to see it all. So I said, God, how will this happen? He says, I'm going to cause unsaved millionaires to begin to sow in your life. When the Lord told me this, I had an unsaved millionaire come to me and say, I like you. I don't want to be a part of your church. I don't want to serve your Jesus. I just like you. Because I like you, I want to help you with your building project. How much do you need? This was right before the pandemic. And he said, I said, well, I'm in a storefront church at the moment, but I, I want to build a building from the ground up, design it the way I want to. I said, okay. We, well, first of all, we was looking for a building. We couldn't find one in the area. Then he said, what about building? I said, yes, I really want to build one. He said, okay, how much would you need? I said, well, I have a contractor. Let me go meet with him. I met with a contractor. The contractor said 1.25. He told me, he said, go get the blueprints. Get the build, get, get the design done. Give me your business plan with all the businesses you want to start. Present it to me and we'll sign off on it. Oh, we went to work. We went and got the blueprints. We got the building design. We went and got everything done. Started a daycare and all this other stuff. Started a, a school and all these things. Took it to him. He said, okay, let's go look at the land. We went and started surveying the land. All of a sudden, 2020 happened. 
And I told that man, I said, you know what? With the conditions that's going on right here, I don't want to be on the hook for this building. Whatever. I don't want to be in debt. And so I said, Lord, what we ought to do? What should we do? Holy Spirit said, I already told you that I've given you a Nehemiah mandate that people are going to give to you. I went back to him and I said, I don't feel right about this deal. I don't want to do this. He said, well, tell me how much you need. I said, well, I found a building. We can renovate it. Probably going to cost me $17,000. He said, that's not the right number. Come again. I went back. I came back the next day. I said, uh, $35,000. He said, you don't know what's happening right now. I say this with all humility. He said, you don't know what's happening right now. And because you don't know what's happening and you don't have an adequate answer, I'm going to give you $50,000. They wrote me a check for $50,000 and sent me on my way. I went home weeping. And the Lord said, son, you were prepared for that moment, but you didn't have your answer ready. And he began to talk to me about the season I was about to go into. And how, and when I went through that season... It's about three years. I came out of it. And the Lord said, now it's time to build again. I don't want to let you know that I'm standing in this room as a testimony to you that God will do the impossible when you go through seasons of process, when you go through seasons of birthing, and what you're about to push out, listen to me. There are mandates in the realm of the Spirit hovering over this house. There are assignments hovering over this house. Amen. And there are letters being issued to kings in the earth that will begin to come and say, what do you need? Hallelujah. I have a heart to bless you. I have a heart to build with you. What do you need? Father's house, I want to tell you, have your answer ready. Learn from my mismanagement of a moment. That takes humility to say. Learn from my mismanagement of a moment where I did not have my answer ready. But God is saying to you this morning, have your answer ready. Have your blueprints written out. Have your designs already established. Have, hallelujah, your business plan already conducted because the kings are coming. Y'all missed it. I said the kings are coming. I said the kings are coming. There is a Nehemiah Nehemiah mandate on this house and it's time to expand now. You got to look beyond yourself. You got to look beyond where you are. You got to look beyond your business. Can a small people, can a nation be born in a day? And the answer is yes, God. Can a nation be born in a day and our response is yes God come on respond to him yes God yes God yes God yes God yes God will obey yes God will expand yes God will work together we'll pull our resources together and we'll build we'll pull our education together and we'll build we'll pull our we'll pull it all together and we'll not one but all I'm going to wrap up with this in Acts chapter 4 the Bible tells us that they had all things in common they had all things in common and God added to the church daily that which should be saved And they went everywhere, preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus. And the church grew and expanded. This series of expansion is about us working together, coming out of ourselves as individuals, become a collective force to advance God's kingdom, to invade the earth with the message of revival, the message of Jesus Christ, that all to all have heard. Oh, hallelujah. With clean hands and a pure heart, restoring the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. 
Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I feel heaven here. I feel heaven here. I feel a holy moment here. I want to, I want to release something and then we're going to, we're going to, we're going to close. Oh, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. My Psalms 34 9. Psalms 34 9 says this Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. Psalms 34 9. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. The fear of the Lord protects you. The fear of the Lord prospers you. The fear of the Lord causes you to walk in health and freedom and liberty. The fear of the Lord will cause us to expand. Fear him. Reverence him. Obey him. Submit to him. Work together to advance his agenda. And in doing so, we will lack nothing. Come on, give God glory in this place. Give him glory in this place. Come on, Father's house. I say give him glory in this place. Come on, let your roar in this place. Come on, let the man know you love him. Come on, let the man know you honor him. We love you, Lord. We honor you. And we adore you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Can't leave like that. Oh, Jesus. Listen. If this word was for you, I want you to stand up on your feet. Amen. All over this building. Holy Spirit said, you can't leave like that. We got to work this altar. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. There are some people in this room that as I was preaching about birth and you felt something kicking in your spirit. And you said, this was for me. This is my word. Who are you? Run to this altar. Come on, come up here. Come up here. We're going to work this. Amen. It's for you. It's for you, baby. This is for you. Where my catcher is at? This is for you. Oh, yes. Let's spread them out. Oh, yeah. Because what's about to happen in your life is everything in your life is about to shift. Oh, yes. Everything in your life is about to go up. There is a demand being placed on you by Yahweh God to where you will not be able to deny this season. For this is a season of birthing and expansion for you. And yes, you come up. Oh. We are work. We are help. Okay. Yes. Ah, oh, yes. Ah. Oh, yeah. This is a season where God is about to cause everything in your life to begin to come up. Yes, you planted, and yes, you watered, but I will get the increase, says the Lord. I will get the increase. Lift your hands at this altar. I hear the Lord say, I will get the increase in your life, and what I'm going to do through you, no one will deny it, and it will not be sabotaged, and it will not be destroyed, and there is no destruction that's going to touch this. Abaddon will not touch this. Apollo will not touch this. And your enemies will flee before you. For I am the Lord your God and I will hold nothing from you. Oh yes! Lifting your cords. Oh yes! Stretch out your tip pegs and drive them deep. Oh! Drive them deep! 
the Lord. Give us the fear, spirit of wisdom and understand, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, spirit of knowledge. We need the fear of the Lord. Give us the fear, spirit of wisdom and understand, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, spirit of we need the fear of the Lord. 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 Won't you give us the fear of the Lord? We need the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. We need the fear of the Lord. We need the fear, spirit of wisdom and understanding, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, spirit of knowledge. We need the fear of the Lord. Give us the fear of. you give us the fear of the Lord 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 won't you give us the fear of the Lord come and give us the fear of Fear of the Lord. We want the fear of 
push it out, 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 every purpose, push it out, push it out, push it out, all your destiny, push it out, push it out, every idea, push it out, 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 don't get tired, don't get tired. Don't get tired, 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 don't get weary, don't get weary, wait on the line, just wait on the line, just wait on the line. Push it up, push it up. It's time, it's time, it's time. So push it up, push it up. 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 Come on here. Push it up, push it up. Give birth. Push it up, push it up. Work in here. Push it up, push it up. Leave for joy. Jump for joy. Push it up, push it up. Leap for joy. Push it up, push it up. Jump for joy. Push it up, push it up. You just gave birth. Push it up, push it up. You holding your baby. Push it up, push it up. You holding your promise. Push it up, push it up. Laugh like Isaac. Push it up, push it up. Laugh like Isaac. Push it up, push it up. Laugh like Isaac. Push it up, push it up. Come on, it's time to laugh. Push it up, push it up. It's time for joy. Push it up, push it up. Weeping may endure. Push it up, push it up. For a night. Push it up, push it up. For joy.
thank God for Apostle Jeremy Gibson coming in. Hallelujah. And helping us to birth that baby. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord.